My wife Carol pointed out to me that um, <laughs> the Strauss opera that I couldn't think of and then said La Boheme <laughs> wasn't by Strauss. <laughs> the actual Strauss tone poem that I played was Salome that had this low E flat. I don't know. I'm having trouble remembering all certain kinds of things with my personal things that I was playing, whether it was music or horns. My memory feels very vivid, though, when I think about John. And I'm, as you can see, I'm just letting this flow with whatever order of things happened to me. My idea and motive for doing this is so people get a feeling from my perspective of the man, the great musician trombonist, pioneer of music, which he was, and he was a friend. And so that's my main purpose for putting this out. So bear with me if, as, if I stumble along. But I'm very clear on certain things. And when John was with you in a lesson, he was with your process. He had his going on, because it was always going on in him. And so it wasn't this person just telling you what to do. They were in a process with you. And um, someone said to me, um, well, he shaped you know, the musical person, or the, he shaped the musician that you are today. Um, I don't even think John would totally agree with that. Um, what it was, was that John was an influence, just like my other teachers were an influence. It's just like the great musicians that I heard around me, or in recording, were an influence. And my great life mentors, who weren't musicians per se, but were pathfinders in the human enigma and what it is to develop as a human being on certain levels of life. And so, what makes a person themselves? It's never just one person that totally shapes someone in a certain way. It's all these different influences coming in. And John was influenced by, by many people too, and he would talk about them. He would talk about how Gunther Schuller really kept challenging his playing. <laughs> you know, to, for example, writing the Ein Kleine Nacht, music, and a kind of Pusana music for him. Um, and then he extends the range quite a bit. He writes a high F sharp. He goes extremely low in it as well. And just that half step puts you in a situation to stretch. And I think John really started to appreciate being in situations that would make him stretch. He loved the challenge because of entering territories that he hadn't been before. And so he attributed a lot of his stretching of his abilities, I think, to Gunther Schuller. And they've had a long relationship um, for many, many, many years. He played in his... Uh, you know, contemporary chamber music ensembles and and all of that. Um, and I know what he means, because Gunther did that to me as well when I was a student at the conservatory. It was difficult to take sometimes, but he definitely <laughs> moved you on. So, um, and John moved people on too. Well, that's wonderful that you're doing an excerpt. But here's this, and here's that, and here's this. Because just a diet of excerpts can really cause musical indigestion. 
not having anything else to nourish the musical systems. An excerpt, just a piece of something. And a lot of times people playing these excerpts, they're not even taking the piece into consideration. And John was very, very aware of that and how that was creating a great deficiency in players. And so his training with Neil DiBiase, <clears throat> um, he would talk about that and, and how um, Neil DiBiase actually, you know, didn't really said, can you play some excerpts? Great. And he said, now let's get on with it. And so he did. <laughs> and at the same time, when I worked on excerpts with John, he had a real feeling for those pieces. And that was the point. He had a feeling and a knowing and a working with and a relationship with those pieces. They just weren't chips off a stone. He knew they, those chips came from a whole body of a piece. So, getting back to my point, um, actually, in the midst of all this, I'm thinking about teaching a lot in general. We're thinking about John, and I always do. And we talked about it a lot. And I'm sure our styles maybe cross some similarities, but are different, <clears throat> of course. But I think one of the main things that they're similar in is wanting a person to open up the territory. Open up the territory. Put yourself in a way that maybe you haven't thought of before. Not get so stuck. Have a little of this. Like a great diet. Make sure you have your greens. Okay? Have a little dessert. <laughs> but there's a certain balance. Have your protein. Have some of the right kinds of fats. And once in a while, maybe some that you just enjoy for enjoyment's sake. But there was a certain idea in this. And he knew everyone had to find their own way. I remember working on some rose shoes with him. And some of my early feelings about playing music and playing lyrically was really coming from my background of hearing a lot of Jewish cantors and the expression that some would really sing with or some um, my grandpa played violin self-taught and just the simplicity and the feeling life whether it was devotional whether it had some humor in it um, some intense fury sometimes more solemn sometimes more sacred all these things and I remember playing one in D minor, harmonic minor, which I call the, the Jewish key. I was playing it for John, and, and uh, he, he said, what, um, when you go into this part, why don't you do this? And I said, well, I don't know, it really reminds me of some of the, you know, Jewish music that I'm, you know, religious music, and I was kind of feeling the synagogue there, and he said, well, why don't you wait and put the synagogue part in here? So he didn't say, don't do that. He said, maybe it would go better over here. The point of him just saying that, okay, opened up the territory of where maybe certain emphasis in music can be made. And he knew that that part of me was genuine. And so it wasn't a matter of, no, we don't do that. Let's find a place for it. I love that about him. And I had that with some other teachers I've had. Stephen Zelmer was like that. Ron Ricketts was like that. That's really marvelous. Because you know what? And I think John knew this as well. Is that every person 
does have a unique voice. And why do we want to snuff it out? Because you don't know what that unique voice will add to the whole ocean of music. <laughs>